Hello and welcome to the Empower Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as the Freemans. And this episode is about defensive behavior, how to overcome this pattern in your relationship. All right, raise your hand if you're driving, if you're at home if you have caught yourself being defensive or perhaps your partner or a combination of both and we aren't going to be speaking on this podcast from oh we have this perfect and we never get defensive we're always going to be human there will be moments that defensiveness pops up but what we're going to talk about today is how to not have this be a dominant way you two are reacting to each other because of the negative repercussions of that Yeah, overall, we would say that communication and defensiveness is happening pretty much in communication. Obviously, it then happens in your emotions and your energy. But the point being, in communication, you're either communicating, check this out, even if challenges are arising, Mm -hmm. even if you're in a conflict, then communication is either connecting you or disconnecting you, bringing you closer or apart. And why we bring this up is defensiveness is probably one of the main ways in which, in communication, you are moving to being more disconnected, being apart, rather than using communication to bring you closer. And a big topic that's been coming up in our private sessions has been not feeling emotionally safe. Like, okay, I can talk about all the superficial topics, but the moment that I start to bring up something that's emotional or that is confronting, you get defensive. You know, that's kind of what they're saying towards their partner. And that's what's so key. And we're going to talk about later on in the episode is how to create that emotional safety where both of you can be vulnerable. You can open up, you can bring up topics that are, you know, challenging, maybe triggering. However, it stays constructive. You don't go down a pattern of destructive conversation and then have a long argument hangover, as we call it, and you just lose a lot of great life together. I would say one of the most frustrating things around defensiveness, and if you're listening, see if you resonate with this, you can just be having a normal conversation from your perspective, and all of a sudden, I know I'm I'm kind of pointing the finger at the partner, but your partner gets defensive and you're like thinking, what is going on? Like literally, I'm just trying to have a normal conversation. I think that's one of the ways it becomes most frustrating for you as a partner, but put yourself in the opposite shoe. If your partner is really just trying to ask questions, get to know you more, understand you more, and here you are popping up getting defensive, imagine how that feels. Exactly. So what we're going to go into now is you know, a definition for defensiveness, then some sources of defensiveness. Like what is underneath the surface of why you and your partner would show up defensive and then some steps to be able to break this pattern. And the reason we use that is because this is not a character flaw. This is not something that you two are stuck in and, you know, your partner's always going to be defensive. You're always going to be defensive. This is a learned pattern and you can unlearn it. (laughs) <laughs> you didn't consciously learn it. You didn't set out to say, I'm going to take a course on defensiveness. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so it is something that you did learn or got conditioned mm-hmm. probably from circumstances. And this is the way that you may have handled this for a long time. Mm-hmm. So essentially, before we go in, we wanted to pause and just have a personal note and ask actually of the listeners. You know, we've been getting so many messages like on Instagram that's probably the, the main place saying like how much this podcast is really landing for people where they're at, what they're experiencing and how great it is. And we love that. We have an ask. Would you now listening, please just pause and go and write a review, mm-hmm. you know, for what we're out to do with this podcast and reach couples reviews are so helpful. And honestly, from my perspective, I think many people have just been messaging us rather than reviewing. We should have a lot more reviews, <laughs> basically. And it does help us reach more couples. And so would you leave an authentic review right now? Our goal, and we want you to play in this game with us, is to get 300 reviews mm-hmm. at this time of doing this podcast. If everyone that was listening to this podcast in one day 
we would be past that. Way past it. So we ask you, if you've been listening and getting great value, please leave a review. All you have to do is go to the button of shows, click on the Empower Couples podcast, scroll to the bottom where you will see other reviews and leave yours. Yes. Thank that would you. help us out a lot. Thank you. Thank you in advance for that. Now, a definition for defensiveness. And I want to get specific with this definition, right? So from Merriam Webster, devoted to resisting or preventing aggression or attack. That word devoted, like yeah, being, that's what stood out to me too. Being like devoted or dedicated to like preventing something, resisting something, and that word attack, right? It can sometimes feel as though you're getting defensive because it feels like an attack. Totally. And so I want to go into the sources of this, okay? Why would we all of us in relationships show up defensive. Now, there isn't just one reason why we would get defensive. So as I list them and we list them together, listen for which one is most dominant for you. It might be different ones at different times, but listen for like, is there one that's really running the show for me that I could actively work on? Okay, so the first one is taking something personally, right? This makes sense. This doesn't take too much thinking about. If I'm getting defensive, I am taking what is being said personally. You're making it about you. Exactly. And a lot of times, and I'm laughing because I catch myself doing this sometimes, the person, your partner says one thing and you make it mean something different and something worse, right? They might be saying something somewhat neutral, fact-based, not even like pointing the finger at you. However, the way that you're listening it becomes something else to you. It's like they say A and you make it mean C and it isn't that you make it mean something positive about yourself, right? Like, wow, that is so nice or that is so, you know, just neutral of what my partner is saying. No, it's like they are saying something about me that I now need to defend. Yeah, an example might be that they say, hey, I'd like to be more intimate. Now you make that mean that you're not, taking the steps for, to have them feel desired. Mm -hmm. And that's not what they were saying. They might say something about, hey, I'd like to review our finances together. And then you make it mean they don't trust me or they found something or they want to control me. Mm -hmm. But you're not necessarily consciously making this sort of meaning about what they're saying, but you're interpreting. That's what's happening. You're interpreting this as my partner is saying they want me to be different or they're disappointed with me or how I'm acting. Mm -hmm. So you are taking this personally, making what they're saying about you rather than, hey, I like more intimacy. I would like to be more on the same page mm -hmm. about our finances. Now, I will have to say the partner is probably not saying it that nice either or that smoothly. They might be pointing the finger at you and saying, hey, you are doing this. But as an advanced listener, you want to start to listen for what is it that they're really wanting more here? Are they wanting to be more on the same page? Are they just wanting to feel more passion and desire in their relationship? Mm -hmm. And it might seem interesting, like why would with this person that I love and they love me, you know, why would I take something that they're saying and make it mean something different? Well, that's what we do as human beings. You know, one of the most profound self-development programs we did talks about how we're always giving additional meaning to things. Now, we're not going to go more into this because there's a lot more sources of defensiveness we want to go into. But if you're wanting to dive more into that, we actually have several like examples and a graph and, you know, a visual representation of this process in our book, The Argument Hangover, which if you haven't read, like, what are you doing with your life? So just a quick plug to check out The Argument Hangover because we go a lot more into that pattern of listening. Now, the second source of why you or your partner would get defensive is that you're trying to protect yourself. Isn't that odd? Why would we protect ourselves from this person that we love and they love us. Well, one of the things that is present for humans sometimes is fear. We don't choose fear. We're not waking up going, I want to be in a state of fear today. And I want to be afraid, you know, when certain things are said for my partner. Fear is just one of those elements of being human. Now, what do I mean by that? We can have a fear of not being loved. If what they're saying is true, 
does that mean they love me less? If what they're saying is true or they really feel that way, would they eventually abandon me? Fear of abandonment is huge. And again, you might not wake up thinking like, I have a fear that my partner is going to abandon me. But it's this unconscious thing that's going on for us, especially if, you know, growing up or some of your formative relationships, you did feel abandoned. It can kind of always be there. Like you'll be on high alert. Oh, no, no. If they get disappointed or if what they're saying is true, maybe eventually they'd get to the point of leaving me. Or another fear that you really used to run the show for me was fear of being punished. You know, and I won't go into a whole long story, but growing up, I was afraid of being punished. So in my relationships romantically, if they were saying something that was about me, I would get overly defensive because it was like, no, 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 I'm not going to let that be true because I'm afraid you will punish me in some way. Or that what they're saying is a punishment. Mm. It can feel very similar to how your mom or dad talk to you. And it's like, oh, they're they're putting me down. This feels like they're a scolding, right? Scolding is a punishment, a verbal punishment. And so sometimes, given that meaning you're making to what your partner is saying, this feels like I'm being punished like a parent. Mm -hmm. Another one would be a fear of being wrong. And I think this is probably one of the biggest ones for men. We'll go more into this, but being wrong. Why is this such a fear? You know, there's just this sense, again, just speaking from a male perspective, that if we're wrong, that we're somewhat less than or sort of not as manly or or masculine or or smart or you know we just feel sort of diminished Mm. or less than we were before and it can kind of tie in with the being punished but yeah being wrong about something like being pointed out or being shamed for something Mm. right there's also similar to this is a fear of being disrespected and i think this was probably another big one for men you know women really strive for the feeling of love where men really strive or are filled from the feeling of being respected. Mm -hmm. When we feel respected, we can show our love. So that's an interesting thing from, from another book. I can't remember the, the title or the author, but when men feel fully respected, we feel open and ready to show our love. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Women are wanting that feeling of love and men want to express it, but we have to feel that level of respect. Yes, that's so true. Well said. Now, another source of defensiveness is that you are trying to protect and defend a certain view, a view of yourself or the situation. Now, we are tending to be very biased in our own favor, right? We tend to see things that really show us in a positive light. And of course, because we're seeing through our own eyes and our own thoughts and our own perspective, we're like, no, 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 mine makes the most sense. And so especially if your partner is saying something that tends to be about you, but you have a different perspective of yourself. So for example, your partner says, you're just not ever listening to me. You don't, you don't listen, but you consider yourself a great listener. You're going to go, no, 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 that is not true because it conflicts with the view you have of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's not a great feeling, right? It's like, I cannot accept that reality because it doesn't fit my reality. But it's true for your partner. So you sometimes have to embrace that. Mm -hmm. It really comes down to, if you haven't heard view, it's the way you see yourself. It is the way you identify. It is your identity. So what you're saying is, is perfectly true. You're defending against your own identity of who you are so it feels many times that a partner is questioning at the core who you actually are and i probably had the biggest moment when we weren't actually married this was long before it when i was in college i don't want to go into the whole story but essentially there was this girl that i was interested in and essentially she heard from other people that i was like seeing other women and this was absolutely untrue. Like I was the opposite of that, right? I mean, and you know that. Mm -hmm. Never had sex before, only had a few relationships. This whole scenario probably played a role in why I was so standoffish and afraid of getting her in my relationships in the future. But essentially, she believed what other people were saying about me over what 
not only I was saying about myself, but how I held myself and how I would hope she would have seen me. So I got super defensive because I'm being questioned, who I am, how I see myself, my identity. So when that gets questioned, it almost feels like a death. Mm. Because if how you see yourself, your own identity is being questioned or being brought into doubt, that's you. That's fundamentally you as a person. Mm -hmm. So if that gets put into question, it's like being obliterated, Mm -hmm. right? It's very scary because that does feel like, well, that's me. Mm -hmm. And that goes to the points you were making. Then maybe you don't love me. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're not meant to be together. Maybe you're going to abandon me now because this is who I am. And now that's in question. Yeah, it can feel, you know, again, depending on what your partner is saying to you, it can feel as though, you know, they are making a blanket statement about you. And I know that can feel painful because of what you just said. Oh, if you believe that's actually true, do you not love me as much? Right. So it's like, man, we can take something and really extrapolate it into becoming so much more than it is. I just thought about this. Then you must not know me at all. Oh, yes. Well, and let that sink in. Mm-hmm. How scary of a feeling is that? Mm-hmm. How misaligned would you feel? You would only think, well, we why are we even together if you don't even know who I am? Yeah, and going back to, right, so you're talking about when your partner seems to be, quote unquote, attacking your identity. Well, but Questioning. All, questioning, put it, Bringing yeah. into doubt. Yeah, it feels mm-hmm. like an attack is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But it's also your perspective. So sometimes you can really see a certain situation, like parenting is a big topic that comes up when we're working with couples or finances or intimacy. And you see it a certain way and that feels like the truth to you. However, there are multiple angles to quote unquote reality and to truth. And so when your partner is saying, no, 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 this is how it happened. Or this is, you know, the circumstance and it doesn't match for you. If you're not being flexible, you will come off very defensive. Mm -hmm. So I think we've really hit this part home. Well, just for me to be complete on this topic, because someone listening might say, well, my partner does that to me. Mm -hmm. You know, they question me. Well, just as fluid and the different angles you could come at a view of a situation, meaning it's not actually real, a much deeper topic here is the identity or the personality in which you hold for yourself is actually flexible. Mm. I just wanted to say that. It's not fixed, but we hold that identity so closely to who we are That's why this feels so kind of scary. It's why we get so defensive over it. So this isn't what this podcast is about. But if you could start to see that your identity, the personality you hold yourself as is not really you, a huge opportunity where you won't get as defensive about anything Mm -hmm. if you hold your own personality as very fluid. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, great point. Last two, and I'll go through these somewhat quickly. Another source of being defensive is if you feel like a boundary was crossed and you did not give, quote unquote, consent to have that conversation. So this is what we call blindsiding, right? So we talk to couples a lot about how you come in to the room, you know, they just finished work or doing the dishes or something and you want to talk about something right then. And so perhaps they get defensive because they didn't feel like they actually gave their consent for that conversation. So it feels like a boundary was crossed and so they unconsciously push back no 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 I was not a yes to this conversation you're coming into my space and you're forcing me to discuss this right now well if this is what drives us is complete feeling unsafe mm-hmm. Un- yeah being emotionally unsafe and that's the last one so the last source of being defensive is that your relationship currently does not feel emotionally safe. And so you are constantly tiptoeing around each other. You feel as though you have to show up perfect for your partner. Otherwise they're going to, you know, treat you a different way. And there's just not this environment of, I know I'm loved. I know I'm safe. I know they're going to validate my perspective and I know that we're going to work through this. And so we'll talk more about emotional safety later in the episode as well. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, what we want to say here is that of all that we talked about, defensiveness is never going to influence your partner. Not the way you want. (laughs) 
And I think when we say influence, I think we do typically mean in a positive sense that mm-hmm. you're using communication and you're using influence to, as we said in the beginning, you're either moving apart or moving closer. So you're never going to influence your partner in a sense of having you both feel more connected mm-hmm. and closer. Now, some people use defensiveness. And if this is you, I really want you to do a self check in use defensiveness to manipulate their partner. Mm. But if you go based on the goal that we set here is that communication brings you closer or you move apart. Even if you're using defensiveness and you do manipulate them to act how you want them to act or be how you want them to be, you're not actually moving them emotionally closer to you. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting, right? We use this defensiveness to manipulate, to get them to do what we want them to, but that doesn't actually bring you guys closer. I do want to say, because that sounds really strong, we're not saying you're consciously choosing that, right? So you're not sitting there going, I'm going to get defensive to try and manipulate or change my partner's behavior. No, this is happening unconsciously, meaning your brain is just spitting this out and it's almost making you act in a way. And then it's only afterwards that you reflect and go, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. You know, so we're not saying that you are a manipulative person or that you consciously choose defensiveness. This is often happening, happening on autopilot. Yeah. So defensiveness as a tool really can only, as we just said, have you be more disconnected but you might get a sense of you protected yourself or that you won or you were right. Mm -hmm. That's really the, the best outcome that you can get. But if you win in the relationship, then your partner loses. Mm. So from the relationship perspective, if the relationship loses, you're ultimately losing. Yes. So using defensiveness is only a lose Lose. outcome. (laughs) Yeah. You might, like I said, you might win, but the relationship loses. So do you really win? Mm -hmm. No. No, there's no winning. So using defensiveness, the main point, the main takeaway here, this is futile. Mm -hmm. This will never bring you closer. And that's the goal of communication. So we really want to kind of demystify and break down defensiveness that this tool doesn't ever have you win. Yeah. So (laughs) let's get into then Freeman's, what do I do then, right? Because I know that I've been getting defensive or I know my partner is getting defensive. So let's get into some steps. All right. First off the goal, and this is a goal that's with all of our podcast episodes. We're not saying you need to become perfect. Aaron and I are not perfect. You will never be perfect. And that is really going to be a waste of energy to try and be the perfect partner or have the perfect relationship. So you aren't going to ever probably eliminate all defensiveness. You can set that as a goal. However, there just might be times that you guys get defensive with each other, right? But we want to lower that number and have you bounce back faster. So if perfection is not the goal, then what is? Well, it's all about self-awareness, which is easier said than done, right? So often we can be on autopilot. We can be in our head thinking about other things. And so we're not in the present moment thinking, how am I showing up? How am I listening to my partner? How am I reacting to them? What is my tone of voice? What's my body language towards them? Self-awareness is something we all must master and practice. So that means being more aware of, again, how you're showing up. How are you communicating with your partner? And the moments where you are starting to act defensive, you want to catch yourself. It's almost like you want to be a fly on the wall watching yourself. And going, oh, I see you. I just showed up being defensive right now. Let me switch this because this is not how I want to be showing up. And so my invitation to you right now is to focus on self-awareness moving forward. Again, that's tone of voice. That's body language. That's how you're listening to your partner. Self-awareness is never something that you can say, I've got this 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right. And really the place of attention is where the second goal comes in as well. So in this first goal, your attention was on yourself, self-awareness, not just of the automatic patterns, but what's showing up for you? How am I being? What's my energy? What are my, my bodily expressions towards my partner? 
So then the second goal is actually redirecting your attention away from yourself, right? Because when your attention is on you, as we said, that's where defensiveness comes in. You're defending against your identity, you're protecting. So if you want to really get rid of defensiveness, then move your attention away from yourself. And where do you put it? You put it on your partner. Hmm, what must be going on for them? What is it they're really trying to communicate here? So you're moving your attention from really this inner dialogue to actually listening to understand your partner, where they're coming from, what they're trying to express, where this upset was coming from for them. You know, we can't give you the answer here, but the point is move your attention over there with them and the experience they're having. Yeah, I want to hit on what you just said about that inner dialogue. You know, we can think, oh, no, no, I'm listening. But really, you're listening to that inner chatter, which is like that interpretation. I don't agree with that. That's not true. That's not what I would say. I can't believe they think that. And Jocelyn makes this noise for this. Bing, boom, bing, boom, bing, boom, bing. Because that's what it can sound like, right? It's just this nagging inner dialogue. Now, we're never never going to get rid of that inner chatter and that dialogue. You just don't want to be listening to it. And the mm. moment that you hear it, you're like, okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to pay attention any further to you. I want to bring my attention back to my partner. What are they actually saying? Not my interpretation of it, but the actual words of what they're trying to communicate. Because perhaps I'm getting defensive because my inner chatter isn't so nice right now. But really what my partner is trying to communicate is just their feelings. They're trying to be vulnerable. They're trying to open up to me. They're trying to say what they want more of in our relationship. And if I just listened to understand them, we would actually be having a connecting moment right now. Oh, well said. Yeah. Let's move to the third goal here because in this thread, when you are focused on yourself and you don't have self-awareness, what do you do when you feel defensive? You just blurt things out, so you react. So the main point here is to move yourself away from a reactionary state of being. A reaction could be something you say, something you do. You know, defensiveness isn't just outward. It's also a sense of retreating. And this is, I think, for a lot of men, how defensiveness shows up. You know, defensiveness would be just removing yourself from the conversation, removing yourself from the physical space, not saying anything, retreating, isolating. And that's just as reactive in a sense as the outward blurting things out, using logic to point out where your partner is wrong or where it's their fault. So this third point really is about not just blurting things out from a state of defensiveness. So you have to, again, recognize it, acknowledge it, redirect your attention. And what this might sound like is, oh, hey, I just realized that I said something that was out of defensiveness and that's something I'm really trying to work on, right? So you acknowledge that, oh, hey, I just said that and that was out of defensiveness. I don't know if I really meant it. I know I can't exactly take it back, but you're acknowledging and redirecting it back to the next step. And then you could even follow that up with saying, can you reshare what you just said? Because I want to understand you. Oh, that's good. And that shows your partner that you're making an attempt to break this pattern of defensiveness. And it's kind of tying all the three pieces together. First being I'm self-aware. So I'm aware of how I'm showing up right now. Two, I'm putting my attention back on my partner and listening to understand them. And that third piece is redirecting when you re realize that it's happening. So it's, again, I'm not perfect. Oh, I just realized my defensiveness was showing up. And I love what you said, Aaron, about how defensiveness can sometimes be retreating. So where you could say, oh, hey, I just blurted that out because I was being defensive in that moment. Please reshare. It could also sound like, oh, I realized I just tried to retreat and shut down mm. because I was feeling defensive. I want to stay engaged in this conversation. Can you continue sharing what you were talking about? Yeah, that's really good. And I want to acknowledge that this isn't really that easy. It really is going to take some conscious effort, some pattern interrupts to move to this type of place of communicating and not be defensive. And there are some conversations that you have a certain pattern of reacting, saying things a certain way, isolating, leaving the room. And when you try to have those conversations, you just keep on getting defensive. Or your partner does the same. So I want to offer here an opportunity to have those types of conversations be facilitated. 
with us. And we've talked about before having a relationship breakthrough session. It's something that we offer you know, a few times a month uh, when we have the opportunity. So we want to offer that again because you can get on a one-hour relationship breakthrough session with us. To do that, we'll put the link here in the show notes. But you'll be able to bring that conversation where either you get defensive, maybe your partner does, you don't make progress, you feel invalidated. Bring that to this conversation with us. And we will be able to facilitate it such that you don't get defensive, you both feel understood and validated, and you will have a breakthrough in this area that is our promise to you. Absolutely. And you can actually go to the webpage to read reviews and hear what couples say about how much progress they get in an hour. You know, things that were taking them months to get any progress, they got more in one hour. So you can actually go to Meet the Freemans dot com slash coaching and you can read the reviews you can read the details the first session is discounted so you can get a sense of our style see how it works and people always go wow that was so much more helpful than anything else we've ever done and so then we talk about different opportunities moving forward with us so go to meet the com slash coaching for that now in closing I do want to say some of you are thinking, well, what do I do if my partner is acting defensive? You know, what did, what can I say differently than what I typically do is get defensive back and two defensive people does not lead to a constructive conversation, right? It'll lead to the argument hangover, which we talked about earlier. So we did put up on Instagram on Monday actually, you know, sayings like, what could I say instead of getting defensive? So you may want to go to Instagram and look at that and save the post so that you can look back. Okay. My partner's being defensive. What's a better thing for me to say right now? And so rather than us taking the time to go into those, go to our Instagram, which is meet the Freemans, save that post. It says, better responses when your partner seems defensive, save that one. It's going to be very helpful. And in summary, right, we're talking about how the goal is never to be perfect. As much as you two are working on yourselves and your relationship, there will be times that defensiveness shows up. The goal here is to decrease that number and to not have it be the dominant way in which you're reacting to each other, which is not going to lead to constructive conversations that bring you closer. As Aaron kept talking about, communication is either connecting you or disconnecting you. And so the two kind of main, main takeaways would be you must create self-awareness. You must be aware of how you're showing up, your body language, your tone of voice, what you're saying back, how you're listening. And then with that self-awareness, you're thinking about how can I create an emotionally safe environment for both of us? which means I'm listening to understand them. I'm not listening to just my inner dialogue and then getting defensive, which is likely going to make them feel like they can't bring up topics. They can't be vulnerable. They can't be open. So the two key pieces are self-awareness and creating emotional safety. And with that, everyone, we really hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, send us a message on Instagram, post it on your stories, let us know that you're enjoying it. And we cannot wait to hear from you all. And with that, we'll talk to you on the next episode.